Hi, it's Kutsky here. I do the Hard Dance and Hardcore radio show on Radio 1 on a Friday night. Basically, over the next seven days, I'm going to do a little mini documentary, I suppose, best way to describe it. Kind of letting you know all the things that go on during the week, all the preparation and planning that's involved in the show. As I speak right now, it's actually 3.20 in the morning on a Friday night. I've just come back from the studios of doing my show live. So before I talk any more about music or plan anything else for the rest of the week, it's time for me to get some sleep. Okay, so it's Monday morning. I've had the nice weekend of going out, playing all the cool clubs, loading it up as a superstar DJ or something like that. But now it's back to reality and I've got to start putting together my next radio show. And quite frankly, I'm just well up for lying here and watching a bit of Jeremy Kyle for a couple of hours, but too much work to do. So I'm gonna grab myself a cup of coffee and get cracking. Okay, ready and raring to go. Another radio show to be done for the week. First up, just to kind of explain a little bit about what the setup is and how it works. Obviously, all my shows are recorded down at Radio 1 in London, but I live up in Chester, so I do most of the preparation and organisation of the show beforehand in my own little humble studio up in Chester, where I'm from. Now, I call it a studio because it sounds so much more professional than, say, in the spare bedroom in my mum and dad's house. But anyway, I'll, first of all, I'll give you a little guided tour around so you can see what sort of things I am using. Okay, so I'm going to give you a bit of a guided tour around the studio and the setup that I use. Now, I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy, so obviously you've got to start with the Mac Pro as the main studio base. I've got a Novation remote MIDI controller, which is obviously not hardware synth based, but it's like I control everything on my nice fancy computer with it. And let's face it, you can't have anything to do with Apple hardcore without having a piano in the studio to have a little tinkle with now and again. I use a Motu sound card, which I absolutely swear by. I've had it for years and it's never ever failed me once, so I'm big on the Motu stuff. And then Yamaha monitors, which I actually saw down in the Radio 1 studios, had a play around with them, and I thought, yeah, I've got to get them bad boys. And then there's the last thing, which is my favourite little toy in the studio, and all the women like to see, is my big knob. Okay, now onto the DJ setup. This is my bread and butter. This is what I got into the game with, and it's still what I love. Can't beat a bit of DJ, a bit of scratching, mixing, all that business. So just to give you a bit of a talk through the setup from left to right, of course, here we have the trusty Technics 1210. I've had this particular deck since I was 16. First thing I got when I got a full time job when I left school and everything and it's like been an absolute workhorse, it's just battled through everything that I've thrown at it and it's still going 100% perfect but it's such a shame now due to technology, but the fella doesn't get much use anymore but oh well superseded by this bad boy which is a Pioneer CDJ1000, pretty much industry standard now I'd say. Um, obviously chuck a CD in, choose it just like uh, vinyl really, do all your scratching, all your cutting, pitch control, loops, hot cues, all that business. Moving swiftly on to the mixer, this is a Pioneer 800, they have this in most of the clubs and they have it in all the Radio 1 studios at the moment. Loads of nice effects and filters and stuff that you can do with it, and lots of flashing lights so it looks really cool at a club and if you press all the buttons it makes it look like you really know what you're doing. Another CD player because obviously you want to mix from one track to the other, and then on the end we have a Pioneer EFX 1000 which is just takes the flashing lights to the next level and it's basically it's just an enhancement on the effects that you get on the mixer, kind of like more filters, more delay, stutter effects, and you get control over them all, which is very nice to add that extra little bit of spit and polish to your mixes. You may have noticed as well, I actually have a laptop on my DJ setup. Now, I'm sure you've guessed I'm quite a geek when it comes to technology and stuff. I always have to have the latest thing. And there's a thing now called Tractor Scratch Pro, which is basically what they call a digital vinyl system, which lets you play all the MP3s, WAVs, and audio files off your laptop, but it lets you play them on your DJ setup as if you just had the CDs or the vinyls on the deck. Basically, really easy to use. The concept of it is, is you pick a track that you want, such as Slipmat's Crowd Control Remix, Wicked Hardcore Tracks. So you just grab it from the bottom, 
dump it straight onto the virtual deck and then as if by magic you hit player and the track plays on the CD just as if you had the CD in the drive and you can see all completely useful and you can see it'll follow on the screen just as great technology hopefully going to start introducing it in my club sets and maybe even bring it into the radio show too one of the features that I've got on my radio show we call the free range mix it's kind of we take a different angle of the music almost on the scene kind of a look at a specific record label for 20 minutes or an artist or a specific style of music or something. This week I'm doing a bit of a self-indulgent thing. It's one of my favourite labels of all time is a label called Pengo Records, which is a Dutch label and they did all loads of big hardcore stuff in the 90s. So I'm going to do a 20 minute mega mix of all of their back catalogue. The only problem with that is I've got all their back catalogue but I've only got it on vinyl. So unfortunately, as I want to do the mashup in Ableton so I can cram as much in as I can, I've got to record them all in. Now luckily I've got this nice little turntable that can record everything in for me in digital quality. But the downside of that is I have to sit here and record in all of them tracks one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. After the other. Right, another feature that we have on the show is called the hardest record in the world right now. Basically, it's a bit of a spin-off of Zane Lowe's feature, the hottest record in the world right now. But because I play hardcore on the radio, it's like every week I go and try and find the hardest record I can possibly find just to try and make the listeners' ears bleed. It's usually a bit of a task sometimes to find a record that's worthy of this title because each week we obviously have to keep out doing ourselves. But I just got a record from Neophyte Records in Holland, which is obviously anybody that knows anything about dance music, and especially hardcore dance music, they like it hard in Holland. And I got sent this track by Nexus called Give Me a Sign. And check this out. Lord, give me a sign. I think that just about ticks the box. Lord, give me a sign. 